This has to be the best arcane strength bleed build in the entire Elden Ring DLC. With the extremely powerful Blood Fiend's arm, a new colossal weapon that even after a nerf in patch 1.12.3, it still packs a punch and can one-shot enemies, and do major damage to bosses with its bleed charge attack. It's really insane and borderline broken the amount of hurt it does with one single hit, paired with some cool looking armor and armaments that make this build improve and the best of all is that you can get it super early in the DLC. So let's jump to how this build works and everything you need. Game on! The build revolves around increasing the bloodlust buildup of the Blood Fiend's arm and abusing in combat the ridiculous two-handed heavy charge attack that can insta-bleed and do crazy amount of burst damage, especially on the first hit when we use the Ash of War Royal Knight's Resolve. This attack is a bit slow, so you gotta time it right to not get interrupted or hit. On faster enemies, it's sometimes a pain to hit with it, but when you do, the damage is crazy good and worth the investment. And if that's not enough, the two-handed normal and heavy attacks also take a big chunk of health of enemies and bosses alike. You can stagger and break the stance with ease. It's like imagine an Oonga Boonga with a big blood splash. The Blood Fiend's arm is a new colossal weapon in the DLC that you have to imbue with blood affinity to reach a crazy high number in blood loss buildup. Right now, with the max level weapon, scale C with arcane and C with strength, and E with dexterity, and with 60 arcane, it reaches to 199 bloodlust buildup. It's huge. You damn right it is. In patch 1.12.3, they fixed or adjusted the arcane scaling and the status buildup of the heavy attack. Before, the arcane scaling was B, and now it's C. And with 60 arcane, I was getting 217 bloodlust buildup, and now 199. But don't worry, this weapon is still powerful and it wasn't nerfed to the ground like some say. You can get this weapon early on, you just have to travel to Prospect Town right next to the DLC starting area. It's a close ride with Torrent and if you want to know how to get it right from the beginning of the DLC, please check the video in the top right corner. I will also link it in the description down below. The Ash of War that I'm running with is Royal Knight's Resolve to increase by 80% the next landing swing, which has to be the heavy charge attack, to do massive damage and one hit bleed. It's low FP cost and fast casting, it makes it easy to apply multiple times during a long fight. I've also noticed that you do some fire damage of some sort, because when fighting flowers or the big hands, you can light them up on fire using the heavy charge attack. Comment down below if you have seen this or am I going crazy? So guys, if you like this build so far, please hit that like button and subscribe. That will help the channel to grow and drive me to make more builds for you guys. Thank you a ton. The armor that I'm running with is a combination of pieces like the White Mask, Briar's Armor, Briar's Gauntlets, and Crucible Greaves. The idea was to wear a cool looking armor like the Briar set that matches the Blood Fiend arm. But I wanted to increase the bloodlust buildup, so I added the white mask. And to get to the magic number of 51 poise, I changed the boot for the Crucible Greaves. The talismans I'm using are Lords of Blood Exaltation, that increases the attack power by 20% for 20 seconds when bloodlust occurs in the vicinity when doing the blood splash damage of the charge heavy attack. Next, the two handed sword talisman that increases by 15% damage from the Blood Fiend's arm, the normal and heavy attacks, the charge heavy attack, and guard counters if you need to. If you want to get this new DLC talisman, please check out this video guide in the top right corner of the screen. This talisman stacks with the next one, the Axe Talisman, that will increase by 10% your charge attacks. And the last talisman will be the Crusade Insignia, that will increase by 15% for 20 seconds after an enemy is killed. This talisman can be found when defeating the Invader Fire Knight Quiline in Bellarat Tower Settlement on the path right after going outside where the small private altar side of Grace is. This talisman is mostly useless on boss fights, so you might want to change it for a turtle talisman, a dragon crest grace shield, or any defensive talisman that can help you mitigating a type of damage from the boss. For the Physique Flask, I'm using the Spike Crack tier to increase charge attacks by 15% for 3 minutes, and the Green Burst Crystal tier 
to boost stamina recovery because the Blood Fiend's arm uses big chunks of stamina per attack. Your main attributes of this build are going to be Arcane and Strength. The class that I used was a Wretch, but you can use a Hero or a Vagabond with a good amount of Strength to start with and then build up your Arcane later. This level 150 character has Bigger at 55 because the DLC enemies are tough and you need a good base health. Mind at 20, this will result in a good amount of FP points to use Royal Knight's Resolve Ash of War a lot of times with no problems. Endurance at 30 to get to a good stamina pool and enough equip load to get to mid load. Strength at 28, this is the minimum strength you will need for the Blood Fiend's arm requirement. If you have more than the level 150 that, that I have, you might want to add more points in strength after getting into the third subcap of Arcane to max out the attack power and blood loss buildup of the weapon. Dexterity at 11, just to cover the requirements of the Blood Fiend's arm. No points in Intelligence. Faith at 15, just to use Flame Grammy Strength Incantation. Arcane at 60, to get the most possible attack rating and blood loss buildup with my 150 character. So yeah, that's how you can set up this insane bleed bill with the Blood Fiend's arm that does incredible damage and insta bleed to enemies and bosses who are not immune, of course. Even after the nerf it got, it's obtainable early DLC and if you love the damage, you can use it for the entire playthrough. You have to be crazy not to try this build. But if you are one of those that tried it with a different item or a different action war, please share it down below in the comments. I would love to read your experience. And do me a great favor, please like this video so you can help the channel out and subscribe if you want to see more of my Elden Ring builds in the DLC. So guys, this is the end. Just keep enjoying Shadow of the Earth Tree and take care, be safe, and see you on the next one.